everybody. I'm Mary Curran, and this is Redirect Destiny. And we have an incredible guest joining us today. It's Deborah Koontz, who I was a fan of her books. And then a friend of mine introduced us, and I was overwhelmed with the chance to meet her. And then I read her biography, and I was like, oh my word. So let's go over. Deborah, first, hi, and thank you for being here. Hi. <laughs> joining us from I'm Colorado. To be here. Yeah. Um, so here's her background. Are you ready for this? In her lifetime, she has been an attorney, a pilot, a best-selling author. What else am I missing? A mom, a new wife. It seems to me like you have it all. And I'm like, oh, every decade, she does what we talk about on the show, make a major achievement. But the second part of our show is, it's not just I had to remember this. It's not just what people achieve, it's how they did it. So I said, Deborah, I'm doing an interview with you about books for another network, but do you mind joining me here? And let's talk a little bit about how. How do I get the discipline to really follow through these projects and feel successful from midlife forward? Is that a fair question? It's a very broad question. Um, no, it's really very good, actually. I think. It all goes to the concept of change. And when we are uncomfortable in where we are, whether we feel like we haven't achieved what we wanted to, or we're not in the job that we hope to be, or we raised our kids, the house is empty, who was it I used to be and what is it I'm supposed to do? Or maybe we're just not feeling very useful or like we have a purpose. And sometimes it's really hard, especially in middle age, to, to just stop there and just say, well, you know, I'm 45, 50, 55, 60, 65 years old. This is it. You know, I, I don't have any more time. I don't know how to do it. I don't have enough money. I don't have the education. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. You know, we can make excuses um, all the time. Right. And excuses are such a bad enemy. But you know what else is a bad enemy is looking at somebody else's life and thinking they have it all and I can't have it or I don't have it, right? It's like, don't judge, don't, don't compare. Maybe comparison's the right word. When you start comparing yourself to somebody else, you, you might rob yourself of your own opportunity. Well, yeah, and we always come out on the short end of the stick when we do that, you yeah. know, because we're not looking at them and going, ha ha, I'm so much smarter than they are. No, we never do that, do we? You know, yeah. we look at people and say, oh my God, how did they do that? And yeah, like, I always wanted to be a pilot. She's a pilot, you know, right? <laughs> well, the pilot thing. Okay, we can talk about that. But, you know, the whole thing for me started out, I, I was raised in an environment that was not very supportive. And I wanted to get out. And that's being casual about it. It was much more than that. And I was also raised in Texas in the last gasp of the Donna Reed era, you know, where I was expected to learn China patterns and, and go marry money if I could and have my 2.3 children and my white picket fence and learn how to cook. And uh, I, I, I didn't want any of that. I wanted to have adventures. I wanted to, that was really, people would ask me when I was five years old, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's the worst thing you can ask five-year-old, by the way. But I would just say, I, I want to have adventures. And, and so I was in an environment where I was stifled as a human and certainly not um, very well respected for my choices as a female. My grandfather told me um, that smart women were unbecoming. Oh, and, you know, that, wow. was, that, was, that was the wow. environment. Oh yeah. And um, there are lots of stories I have about like that. And I just wanted out of that environment. And so I had motivation at an early age to get a college degree. That was my way out. I wasn't terribly talented at anything. I could ride a horse, but nobody was really going to pay me a lot of money to do that. And so I just needed a way to make a living. And so I started and I had two fabulous grandmothers. And we can talk about those at a later date. But what they taught me was how to stay true to yourself and keep going one foot in front of the other towards your goals and you'll get thwarted you'll you'll make mistakes you'll make wrong turns you'll run out of money somebody will come along to open a door for you or show you how to do something that you didn't know how to do it's a you know two steps forward one step back kind of thing 
but you have to have the courage of conviction, you know, to do it. And, and then the self-awareness to say, oh, you know, I made a wrong turn back there. I need to go back, you know, a couple of steps and make a different choice there and maybe head off in a slightly maybe different Maybe even because we're trying to help people that are trying to achieve their dreams. So for all of you watching, give yourself permission to take a step back. Just because you totally. took a misstep doesn't mean everything's ruined. Just go back and fix it, right? Or yeah, and just because you said you wanted... Path. Yeah. And just because you said at the, in, you know, at the beginning that you wanted to achieve this thing, if you get halfway down the road and you, you don't want to achieve that thing anymore, you want to achieve this sort of related thing over there that you didn't see yeah. at the start of the journey, go, you know, yeah. it's not a failure. It's not that you have to apologize to anybody for your misstep. It's like, oh, wait, look at all I've learned so far. And what it has brought me is clarity on you know the next phase of my adventure you yeah. know and it may change again i try and tell my son this all the time life is nothing but an adventure and if you find yourself if you on call it an adventure too i love that because you know what it does it takes the fear out of it yeah and fear that's is awesome. awful and that's that is a huge part of this and learning how to overcome yeah it's fear. my adventure i like uh, that yeah, it's my adventure and you can come along if you want or not but don't mess with my adventure because in an adventure you don't care if you if you do something wrong like you can't make it to the top of a mountain the adventure was trying right so what yeah yeah you know I and if that. you That's define your life analogy. yeah if you define your life by the goal that you're reaching and whether you reached it or not you're going to constantly be unhappy mm -hmm. but if you define it by the process of defining goals achieving goals maybe changing goals you know, then you are always happy in the process because you are doing something every day toward your goal, toward, you know, in that process. And it's fun and you feel empowered and you feel like this is, this is awesome. This is me. Oh my gosh. Wasn't that fabulous advice to take a daunting goal and make it feel like you're on an adventure. I feel so inspired. And here's what's crazy. I really didn't intend on interviewing Deborah Kuntz for this reason today. We were on a Zoom call for something totally unrelated, but I'm glad she took the time. And not only did she have good advice on how to approach your goals, she kept going and talked about how to have the discipline to get the work done and she makes it seem just as fun and just as easy. So make sure you tune in for segment two. It's fabulous. If you like the show and the things we're doing, please subscribe. If there's a topic you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. That's it for this episode. I'm Mary Curran, this is Redirect Destiny, and we hope to see you back again soon.